Are you like me and constantly struggle to work out which piece of music to learn next? Of course, there's so much beautiful music and so little time that it's a hard choice. Well, stay tuned for some ideas that might help you make that difficult decision. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves a piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first trip here, then please do think about subscribing. Simply hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and it's all done for you. One question that comes up very frequently in a lot of the online groups of which I'm a member is what piece should I learn next? People are always looking for advice and they'll generally list out a few of the most difficult pieces that they've learned recently. However, it's a very difficult question to answer just like that because there are so many different variables that we might want to take into account. These might include things such as the difficulty level of a piece. How difficult is it compared to our current level of playing? Then of course, there's the type of music that we like, be it composers or periods. All of this can be quite important for the choice we make. And of course, whilst we're practicing, part of the aim of the game is to get better. So we might have particular weak areas in our playing that we want to find things to work on that will help us to improve these particular areas. And then finally, of course, there are the pieces that we're currently learning. We want to make sure we've got sufficient variety, both in terms of difficulty and in terms of music. Then, depending on our answers to these questions, we can start to narrow down our choices a little bit. So then let's consider the difficulty level, for example. Of course, working out how difficult something is to play and having a good idea of what our current ability level might be are both important considerations here. Luckily, I've already released a video on how you can work this out about the Henley system, where you can look up pieces of music to see the difficulty level, or alternatively, look up pieces that you know and then see what level they are to judge what you think your own level of difficulty might be. I've linked that video below for you as the Henley system is both free and easy to use. With this in mind then, we might want to find pieces of music that are either a little easier than our theoretical level of ability or more difficult than our current level. For example, if like me, you've not really done much in the way of preludes and fugues in the way written by Bach, then a sensible place to start when learning this kind of music would be to find something a little easier than my theoretical current level of ability. However, when I get to the stage that I've learned the entire Well-Tempered Clavier Book 1, of course, then choosing a prelude and fugue, I'd want to find one that would stretch me a little bit more. Equally, we might want to find something that we can learn relatively quickly for whatever reason. And in this way, we want to find something that sits comfortably within our current level of ability or maybe even slightly below it. Then, of course, there are the longer term projects that we mature peers, shall I say, always like to choose where we know we're going to probably spend months and months and months working on them. So we'll pick something that's, you know, maybe considerably more difficult than our current level. We'll come back to this idea a little bit later, but for now, let's just say we can use the Henley system both to find out how difficult a piece of music is and also to try and get some kind of view on what our current level of ability is. The next thing, of course, is we want to make sure that we're playing music that actually interests us. And you know, this is, I think, particularly true for mature pianists. We don't want to spend the limited time that we've got working on things that we really don't appreciate or enjoy. Here, of course, we can simply look for works by our favorite composers, for example. However, if you're like me and you enjoy watching YouTube videos of some of the great pianists, then you'll find that this is also an excellent way to get new ideas for repertoire, especially if you listen to the encores. Horowitz, for example, has got lots and lots of encores that he did over the years that actually are quite accessible even to an intermediate pianist. So it's a great way of learning new things and finding new things. In this way, creating the overall wish list of the things that we'd like to learn becomes relatively simple. 
We can use YouTube as our starting point, but of course, if you have a subscription to something like Idagio, then you can go on there discovering works by different composers or works played by different artists and start to add to your list of things that you'd like to learn. This voyage of discovery, of course, can take a little bit of time, but the end result is well worth it. For example, Chopin's C-sharp minor waltz was something that I discovered when watching a video by Arthur Rubenstein where he said, you know, this is one of my favourites. And it was something that I would not learned before and I don't remember having heard it before particularly and decided that that was something I definitely wanted to tackle. And you've probably noticed I even use it, or a part of it anyway, in the introduction to all of my videos. Another important thing, of course, is picking pieces that will help our development as a pianist. Now, let's just say, for example, we're not too good with thirds, and whilst these never come up in an extended way in the pieces we're playing, we do feel that, you know, it detracts a little bit from some of the music that otherwise we play quite well. So in a case like this, you might look, say, at the Bergmüller Etudes, where there's one that's based on thirds, or, of course, advanced pianists might go to Chopin for this kind of thing. All the same, there is lots of beautiful music where you can practice thirds in a more isolated way and help you to get better at them. Of course, and there are lots of other areas of technique where we need to improve. So, for example, scales is another one. If we have trouble keeping scale passages easy within a piece, then learning something like the Allegro from Mozart's C major sonata is a good place to start because this allows you to exercise the scales within a piece of music. Ultimately, I found that it pays dividends not to choose pieces that are too, too difficult overall when we just really want to practice one specific area of technique. In that way, we're able to keep our practice time fresh and learn a piece relatively quickly and also practice the specific technical area. Then I think perhaps the final thing that we want to take into consideration is our choice of next piece based on the context of what we're currently learning at the moment. When I first returned to the piano, I had the tendency to only pick quite difficult things that were always a longer term project. And probably this is because as adults, our musical tastes are probably somewhat more refined than those of a young child. However, in reality, I think that by always choosing very difficult pieces, we're probably missing a trick, really. And it's good to have some things that are a little simpler that maybe we can learn in a month or so, and use these as building blocks to help keep our brains engaged and active whilst we're practicing. Therefore, what I'll tend to do is choose to learn a new piece of a similar level of difficulty than the one I've just finished. So for example, if it's one of my longer term projects and I've decided to put it to one side for a few months, then I might go either back to another longer term project and work on that again or introduce a new one. If on the other hand, it was a simpler piece that I'd just learned and I was quite happy with and ready to move on, then I'd replace it with a simpler piece. Of course, let's not forget that part of the point of playing piano is to have a little fun as well. So maybe if it's approaching Halloween or Christmas or some other festival, then we can learn something in the short term that's a little easier that we can post on Facebook for our friends and family. I hope you found these ideas useful. And of course, if you're not already, please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click on that little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching as always, and I will see you next week.